more than we disagree. We all agree we ought to be uh, 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 truthful instead of lying, honest instead of cheating, uh, promote life in, in, instead of uh, uh, murder. But where does this sense of moral obligation come from? Which makes more sense? And this is the question I have to you. To account, which makes more sense to account for moral obligation? A universe in which the ultimate reality is a moral person or a universe in which moral persons are a late and insignificant byproduct of impersonal forces? Well, if you answer the latter, if you say moral persons, since I think we can agree we are moral persons, we appeal to morality, if you're saying we're, man is a late and insignificant byproduct of natural impersonal forces, you're saying the moral comes from the non-moral. The personal comes from the impersonal. That something comes from nothing. But I say the moral comes from a supreme moral being who has set the example for us and taught us how to live. God really did not determine right and wrong. God did not decide one day it's wrong to lie and good to tell the truth, wrong to cheat, and good to be honest, wrong wrong to be uh, selfish and right to be unselfish. It's in the nature of God. And it's in our nature. If we'll follow our nature, sin is unnatural. We weren't designed to live selfishly. That's when you first started acting selfishly. And hopefully to this day when you've done something extremely selfish, you have a sense of guilt over it. See, pain, a guilty conscience, is to the soul or mind what pain is to the body. You get a pain in your body, you'll do a medical checkup. That's not normal. Something is wrong. When you get a guilty conscience, you need to go to God and confess your sins. And if you're sincere and go to God through Christ, you'll have a clear conscience. Now the fourth question, any religion, any uh, philosophy must give a coherent reasonable, intelligent answer to is that we start off with origin. We end with destiny. This is, again, something we've all wondered about. We all know we're going to be, uh, all of us are probably gone here in, within 60 years. With me, much less than that, probably. We're all going to die. We all have an appointment with death. What about life after death? Is there life after death? If so, what's the nature of that life? Well, Christianity gives us hope that we will see our loved ones again if they had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll be with him throughout eternity. Uh -oh. Our bodies will be resurrected. Uh, we'll know one another's personality and character uh, in heaven. Gives us this wonderful hope beyond the grave. Now, we need hope to survive. What happens when people lose hope? They fall into despair and depression. And some people end up committing suicide. They can't bear to live any longer when, when life becomes hopeless. But we have reason to have hope. To survive physically, we need three basic things. Food, clothing, and shelter. Now, if you're willing to work a little bit, you might have to plant a garden and get yourself a gun and go out and shoot a rabbit or something, but it's easy enough to find food to gratify this basic physical need. Plenty of water out there to drink. Uh, and there's always shelter available. You might have to go to Walmart and get a $50 pup tent, but you can find shelter if you are show a little bit of uh, ingenuity and determination. Now, to survive mentally or spiritually, to have good mental health, we need three things. We need faith, 